Here they are, folks. You have no idea how excited I was to get my hands on Apple's latest, most polarizing product, the AirPods Max. Smooth lines, premium materials, and high fidelity sound at a price point that a lot of people wouldn't even consider. I've been listening to these and can attest to their comfort and sound, but we're not here today to talk about my opinion. That'll be in a separate video, which you can click in the link in the description. Instead, we went through the 10 most comprehensive AirPods Max reviews we could find, and we're bringing you everything you need to know on whether or not you should buy these. First, we're gonna go through all the reviews we looked at and give you a breakdown of the top tech sites and YouTubers' opinions of these ear Ferraris. And then, at the end of this video, we will show you the best way you can find a possible deal on the AirPods Max, but no promises. Are you ready? Give this video a thumbs up and let's begin. We start off with design and comfort, the obvious first takeaways for any sort of wearable. And for the most part, reviewers were pretty pleased with the design of the headphones. Forbes said it best, Looks are subjective, but the AirPods Max win easy points for originality in a sea of similar looking headphones. Weight was a point of contention as these run on the heavy side when compared to competitors. For instance, the Sony XM4s are 254 grams while the AirPods Max are 385. Most said it wasn't a deal breaker, but this did make the headphones feel a little pinchy on the noggin. That said, it wasn't as big of a deal breaker as the case. The main negative point of this section, there was virtually no love for the case, if you can call it that. Apparently social media lit up comparing the in-case look of the AirPods Max to a brassiere. More importantly, the consensus was that the included case did little to protect the headphones, which might seem ironic considering how much you're going to be paying for these. On to performance, we found that 6 out of 10 reviewers gave overall positive notes to the AirPods Max. The big highlights were its seamless setup and integration with Apple products through its H1 chip, and the reviewers loved the transparency mode, which allows you to hear what's going on around you while you're listening. On the flip side, though active noise cancellation wasn't poorly received, some felt the feature could have been better. Another negative, these can be used with Android and Windows devices, but performance seems to drop off when they aren't being used with Apple products. Also to keep in mind, as MKBHD, Snazzy Labs, and Unbox Therapy all mentioned, these are consumer headphones, not meant for studio or serious performance listening. Sound quality, probably the most important section of this whole video, right? And reviewers were split with six leaning positive and four neutral, so no real negatives here, but the main takeaway is that these sound good. But are they $550 good? I think that's a hard question for anyone to answer because there's not really any other product on the market at this price point. And they have features and functionality that may make them unique enough to justify the added expense over competitors for some, but putting the price aside, they're a solid sounding set of over ears. Volume, clarity, punch, bass, they all hit the main points well. Here's what they lack though that led some to give a neutral response. First, they don't have a customizable EQ feature. Instead, Apple has an adaptive EQ functionality that changes settings automatically for you. They also don't support other codecs besides Apple's AAC streaming, so you can forget about high fidelity sound from sources like Tidal. Unbox Therapy put it best here, saying the headphones probably weren't meant for Mozart, but handle pop and electronic music just fine. Battery life was not a great review point for the AirPods Max. At a rated 20 hours of full featured usage, only 4 out of 10 gave them positive reviews. Though the 4 neutrals said it didn't necessarily bother them, the battery life could be better. On the positive end of these notes was the quick charging feature, which gives you an extra hour and a half of listening time with just a 5 minute plug in with the lightning cable. And a full recharge only takes 90 minutes but some people won't even be able to charge these out of the box because they don't come with a wall charger, just a cable. There's also confusion on how these headphones preserve battery life since they don't have a power button. Apple has built in technology to automatically switch them into low power mode, but as The Verge review stated, I still wish Apple had been less Apple-like and just put a power button somewhere for simplicity's sake. It seems where the AirPods Max shine, at least according to reviewers, was in its functionality. 10 out of 10 positive reviews. And though active noise cancellation and transparency modes aren't anything new in this segment, it's the extra features that make the AirPods Max truly stand out. 
One such feature is spatial audio, a new technology that sort of tricks you into thinking you aren't wearing headphones. For certain audio sources like movies, the AirPods Max track where they are in relation to your device and adjust the sound to trick your mind into thinking you're getting the sound from your device instead of the headphones. It's the trippiest thing. In the words of I Just Seen, spatial audio is cool, dude. And CNET also said it's not a true surround sound experience, but definitely fun to try. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the H1 chip allows for basically seamless integration with all Apple products. And with the latest OS updates, Apple's handoff feature automatically switches the AirPods Max to the device you're using. If I'm listening to music on my iPhone, but then I wanna grab my iPod to watch a video on YouTube, the headphones will automatically switch over to the iPad without needing to hit Bluetooth or AirPlay. It just works. Definitely the worst reviewed aspect of the AirPods Max was the hefty $550 price tag. Granted, it's not as preposterous as the original Apple Watch Edition line, which could run you as much as $18,000 for a gold watch, but none of the reviewers had anything positive to say about the fact that the closest competitors for the AirPods Max were about $200 cheaper. And while we're on the subject of price, as of this shoot, the AirPods Max are still on back order or pretty much sold out everywhere. But Surprisingly, there has already been a discount for them. One retailer put them up for sale $50 off in December 2020. So don't be shy about searching for a deal. We've linked Slick Deal Search for AirPods Max in the description so you can check out any deals that might be happening for them right now. In conclusion, the AirPods Max are pricey, but they sound pretty good. My personal recommendation would be if you can find them for sale under $400, pull the trigger, but I'm not so sure you wanna pay the full 550 on these. Tell us all the things you think you could buy for $550 instead of the AirPods Max. And don't forget to subscribe for more slick deals. I'm Pete King, and if you paid full price, okay, well, you might actually have been trying this time. <laughs>